Hello, welcome to module 13, Measuring and Analyzing Product Costs. Before starting on this, I need to give you some background. It's very important for companies to know how much it costs to make their products for obvious reasons. Among others, it helps companies determine selling prices. Obviously, you don't want to set a selling price that's lower than the cost of making the product. The concept of costing systems began around the period 1903 to around 1909. At guess where? You know the company. It's very famous. Ford Motor Company. Around this time, Ford made the small black identical cars. You know it. Guess the name of it. The T model. And Ford had a problem because at this point they had absolutely no competition. So there was no selling price that he knew of. So he called his accountants and told them Tell me how much it costs to make a small standard T model car. And the reason is it, it would help determine a profit margin and set a selling price. So in 1903, between 1903 to 1909, they came up that is, the accountants of Ford Motor Company came up with a costing system. The costing system, they came up around this period, 1903 to 1909, believe it or not, is pretty much the same identical system used by most companies today. The system which began at Ford Motor Company is formally known as the traditional costing system. It's called the traditional costing system because it's been around forever since the turn of the 20th century. However, things started to change in the 1980s, especially with the emergence of client-server networks. Now, here's the problem. A manager interested in developing and implementing a client-server network system would call his or her accountant and ask the accountant to estimate the costs. Guess which system the accountant used for estimating costs. Of course, there's only one system out there, the traditional costing system. Assume the accountant came up with an estimate of two million. The managers would decide that was acceptable since it was within their budget. They would then go ahead and implement the system. The problem was that in most cases, the accountant got it wrong. Let me repeat, the accountant got it wrong. The actual cost turned out to be more than triple. In our example, let's assume that the actual cost was around 10 million.
So, you spent 8 million more than anticipated. If you were the manager and this happened to you, what would you think? You certainly wouldn't be happy. You can't blame the accountant because the accountant, in turn, would blame it on the costing system, saying, hey, there's an inherent deficiency in our system. The question is, what went wrong? A lot of people did research in this and found that the traditional system doesn't work in the new client-server environment. So the general conclusion is that the traditional costing system does not work well in the new technological environment. To be honest, it doesn't work very well in non-manufacturing industries like healthcare and financial services either. So there's a problem. Around 1985, Robert Kaplan from Harvard University came up with a new system to solve this problem. Working from his house in the rural and beautiful countryside, he came up with a new system. It was called activity-based costing. Kaplan, it turned out, was a very modest individual and didn't call the new system by his name. He called it activity-based costing and it, now it goes by the acronym ABC. So now you really have two systems out there. There are companies who use the traditional system simply because overall it's been tried and tested. There are other companies who prefer to use ABC. Now here's a very brief comparison of both systems. Once I tell you this, you can use your imagination to figure out why a lot of companies still prefer to use the traditional system. Compare both systems. Let's take the traditional system. The traditional system is easy to use, it's easy to implement, it's easy to understand, and most important, it's inexpensive. It doesn't cost much to implement. Best of all for the accountant, they don't really need to interact with managers from different functions. No interaction required. So the accountant could stay in his or her booth and just come up with the system. If you take ABC, it's difficult to implement far more complex, it's very costly, and it's very costly because a lot of people from virtually every division need to be involved. And while they are working on it, you're paying for their time, aren't you? And finally, considerable interaction is required between the accountant and the managers of different functions. And the managers of different functions have to coordinate with each other. Basically, there's a lot of talking involved. 
So in a sense, it's a holistic system which involves everybody from every department. That's not easy. Now, let's discuss both systems. We'll start with the traditional system and then move on to ABC. The traditional costing system. How does the traditional costing system work? Let me give you an example. Let's take an auto repair shop. When you take your car in for repairs, how do they cost the job? The way it works is as follows. For each job they compute, the material, how much labor went into it, and overhead. Then they total it up. For direct material, they use actual cost. That's the actual material used in the job. For direct labor, they use actual cost. That is, what was actually paid to the workers. Overhead is estimated. The question is, why estimate overhead? Do you need a few minutes to think about it? The reason for estimating overhead is it's very difficult to figure out the actual overhead on a job. It's very time consuming. This is because a lot of costs go into overhead, like part of rent, utilities, power, etc. So it really does take a long time to figure out. Think about it. Can you tell your customer, if this is your business, can you tell your customer to wait about four or five weeks while you figure out the, the actual overhead on a job? I guess you could. The customer would certainly be very happy. But it's not really a good way of doing business. Don't you agree? So what you do is estimate the overhead and give the customer an estimate over the counter. There are different techniques to estimate overhead. These techniques include number of units, direct labor hours, direct labor dollars, machine hours, among others. Try these examples. I'm going to put up some examples for you right now. Think about this and fill in the blanks. For each, tell me how you think the respective companies would estimate overhead. Stop this presentation for a few minutes and fill in the blanks. OK, are you ready? Take the first one, the law firm of Johnny Cochran. How would they estimate overhead? If you said labor hours or labor dollars, you're dead on. This is because most of the overhead in a law firm relates to people's salaries. How about an automated factory belonging to Union Carbide? If you said machine hours, dead on. This is because most of the overhead relates to costs associated with machines. 
How about the next one? The Ballpoint Pen Company. They make trillions of ballpoint pens, so maybe you could say number of units. Now, I want to spend a few minutes showing you how to estimate overhead. Look at this example. A car repair shop applies overhead to different service jobs and they decided to use direct labor hours as the method for estimating and charging overhead. At the start of the year, the manager estimates total overhead will be $30,000 and total direct labor hours around $2,000. Here are the questions. What's the application rate for indirect costs or overhead? B. If a service job requires five direct labor hours, how much overhead will be applied to it? C. If direct labor costs $10 per hour, what's the total cost of a job that requires six direct labor hours and $100 worth of parts? What I'd like you to do is to stop this presentation and try this problem. Once you're read, once you're done, let's restart. Here's the answer. Part A. The estimated overhead at the start of the year is 30,000. They decide to use labor hours to charge overhead. Estimated labor hours is 2,000. By dividing overhead by labor hours, you get what's referred to as the application rate. That this is how much a company would charge for overhead right through the year. In this case, they decided it's $15 per labor hour. This means the company would charge overhead $15 for every hour worked by employees on a job. Let's do part B. If they work five hours on a job and you, agree, you decide to charge $15 per hour, the overhead charged would be $75. Let's do part C. The cost of the job is direct materials, then you add labor, both for which you use actual cost, then you add Overhead, which is estimated. Direct materials is $100. Direct labor is $60 because they work six hours and you pay them $10 per hour. How much would you charge for overhead? Didn't we decide overhead would incur about $15 per labor hour. They work six hours. So six hours at $15 is $90. That's the estimated overhead on this job. So the total is $250. That's the cost of the job then, of course, they'd add their profit margin before giving the customer an invoice. 
Let's try another problem. I want you to take a few minutes and read this problem or even print it out. It's about a tennis racket manufacturer who makes several different types of rackets. They decided to charge overhead using direct labor dollars. At the start of the year, they estimate overhead to be $4 million, and they estimate their payroll to be $2 million. Direct material costs are estimated to be $3 million. Here are the questions. Stop this presentation now. Try this problem and start when you're ready. Now, answer. Part A. The estimated overhead is $4 million. You decide to charge overhead using labor dollars. The estimated labor dollars is $2 million. So the application rate is overhead divided by labor dollars, which is 2, which means overhead is 200% of labor cost, or overhead would be around two times your labor cost. So the cost of the job is uh, material, labor, overhead. Have you tried this problem? What are the answers you got? Here are the answers. Material, actual cost, 5,000. Labor, actual cost, 2,000, which is 200 hours at $10 per, per hour. Overhead, 4,000, because you decided to charge overhead two times the labor cost. So, the total cost is 11,000. Let me ask you a question. What did you do with the estimated direct material cost of 3 million? The answer is, it's a red herring. In this problem, you don't need it. Now that you got comfortable with the traditional costing system, what do you feel about it? One thing you would have noticed is that it's really quite easy. That's the reason most companies are very comfortable with it. Also, there's a feeling that if there are any errors, it sort of washes out. Let's go to ABC. Let's talk about the steps in developing an activity-based costing system. Step one, identify all activities that are undertaken to produce and sell a product. Step two, break down the activities into four categories. They are unit level, batch level, product level, and facility level. Before we go on to the other steps, there are five steps. Before we go on to the other steps, I just want to stop and explain step two. The reason is, in one sense, this is the most important step. In step two, what did I say? We break down activities into 
unit level, batch level, product, product level, and facility level. As I said, this is important, so let me spend a few minutes on this. Here are the definitions. Unit level. The definition is in front of you. Unit level is sort of an activity level where indirect product costs, that's overhead, vary with the units produced. Batch level. This is an activity level that the overhead vary with batches produced. Products are often created in batches. A batch consists of multiple units of the same product that are processed together. Costs associated with batches are called batch level costs. These vary with the number of batches produced. Let's continue. Product level. This is an activity level where overhead vary between products. Some activities benefit products as a whole rather than individual units or batches of a product. Costs that are common to all units of a product are called product level costs. Facility level. Some activities aren't related to anything. They're common costs. These are called facility level costs. Examples are the most obvious example would be rent. The first skill you should have is when you look at an activity, you should be able to say, is it unit level, batch level, product level, or facility level? Let me give you an example. Look at this. Assume a company has a factory which produces two different items, namely dog food and cat food. Now, consider these activities. For each activity you see in front of you, tell me if it's Unit level, batch level, product level, or facility level. Stop this, print this out, or try it, and start when you're done. Cost of containers for the dog food or cat food, if you said, unit level, you got it right. This is because the cost of the containers go very directly with the units made. Cost of running machinery, if you said unit level, it's, you got it right, because the cost, machinery running cost, increases with the number of units made. Transportation to warehouse, that's moving finished products to warehouse. Answer is batch level. Do you think they move items by individual containers or in batches? Chances are they move it to the warehouse in batches, so it's batch level. Advertising costs. If you said product level, you got it right. This has to be product level. This is because 
advertising relates to a particular product. For example, would advertising of Purina cat food impact dog food sales? Absolutely not. Would an advertisement for dog food influence cat food sales? No. So this is a product-related activity. Rent. Rent is facility level. Utilities, what did you say? This is also a facility level activity because really it's common to all products. Now, let's do this exercise. Describe the following activities as producing unit level, batch level, product level, or facility level costs. Stop and try it. When you're done, I'll give you the answers and we'll continue. Are you done? Here are the answers. The first one, track loads of products to customers. You could make a case it's batch level because they send it in batches. The second one, providing data processing services for the office. You could make a case for facility level. Operating a machine to make products. I could make a case for unit level. Setting up machines to make different products. You can make a case for batch because you set up the machine by batch. Again, remember, there's no right answer. So if you had an answer which is different from mine, don't worry. The answer is it depends on the company and how the company does business. So once again, in the exam or homework assignment, state and justify why you said something. Even if it's different from my answers, you'll get full credit. That is, if you justify your answer. Applying for patents on products product level. Accounting for sales transactions. This is a tough one. You could actually make a case for each one of them depending on how your company does business. I'd go with facility level because accounting for sales transaction is just it's common to all the products. I think you really know step two. Let's continue with the rest of the steps in developing an ABC system. Step three, identify cost drivers at each level noted earlier. Unit, batch, product, and facility. At each level, what's the cost driver. Step four, determine an application rate for each of the cost drivers identified in step three. Step five, allocate costs to products based on usage of the cost driver. If you haven't understood it, don't worry. Let me repeat, don't worry. It'll become clear when we work a problem together. I'm going to give you the problem now, and I want you to print this out. Here it comes. It involves a company called Skate Snakeboards. It makes two types of skateboards, flat, which is a cheap kind, and a fancy kind called molded skateboards. 
ఓకే ప్రిన్సెస్ పేజా ఇన్ ఇన్ దిస్ పేజ్ ఐ గివ్ యూ ఫర్ ఫ్లాట్ అండ్ మోల్డెడ్ స్కేట్ బోర్డ్స్ ద కంప్యూటర్ మెటీరియల్ అండ్ లేబర్ కాస్ట్ ప్రింట్ దిస్ పేజ్ అవుట్ టు యూ గైన్ నీడ్ ఇట్ హియర్ సమ్ మోర్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఫార్ యర్ Jeff, the owner, is wondering what the indirect costs or overhead related to his business are. Read this, then print it out. Here's the information on overhead. The total overhead broken down by function or activity is 400 dollars. and 50000 the breakdown is given to you this is part of the problem print this out now here of the exercise here we discuss the marketing strategy of the company it basically involves visiting potential stores the estimated units to be made are 50000 for flat skateboards and 5000 mold skateboards print this out now here are the questions are a print this out please and part b read this then print it out and he continued the last two questions part d part b print this out What I want you to do is take a few minutes have the printed copies in front of you and read it really carefully stop this presentation till you are done reading once you are done reading let's restart Okay, in work part A. Traditional costing using units method to estimate overhead. The estimated overhead is 450,000. The estimated units are 55,000. So the application rate is $8.18 per unit. So, let's summarize the unit cost. That is the cost of making one unit of flat skateboard and mold skateboard. For flat, it is material a dollar 8 given to you, labor $5 given to you. Overhead, we just computed it $8.18. so the total cost is $14.26 the selling price is $15 so you estimate they make a profit of 74 cents per skateboard for mold it is material a dollar 20 per unit labor $10 per skateboard overhead we just computed it $8.18 so the total cost of a mold skateboard is $19.38 the selling price is $25 so the profit is $5.62 now what's your conclusion i guess make both skateboards make them both am i correct 
Or you could say, make molded skateboard and forget flat skateboard. But the bottom line is, even though the profit per unit of flat is low, they got a huge volume. So it seems it's profitable to go with both. Now, let's use the labor hours method to estimate overhead. The estimated overhead and labor hours. Let's start. The estimated overhead is 450,000. Estimated labor hours is 30. Did you get that? If you didn't, let me show you. We said flat is 50,000 units, and in the problem it's given, it takes half an hour to make a unit. So that's 25,000 units. Sorry, 25,000 hours. For mold, it's 5,000 units. It takes one hour per unit given to you in the problem. So that's 5,000 hours for mold. So for flat, it's 25,000 hours because it's 50,000 units at half an hour per unit. For mold, it's 5,000 hours because it's 5,000 units at an hour per unit. So that comes to 30,000 hours. So the application rate, if you divide it, is $15 per labor hour. So when you make these products, if you use labor hours, you charge $15 per labor hour for overhead. Now, let's summarize the information for both types of skateboards. For flat, the information looks like this. Let's go. Material $1.08 per unit, labor $5 per skateboard, overhead you charge $7.50. Why is that? Because it takes half an hour to make a, f a skateboard and we decided to charge $15 per hour. So the total cost is $13.58. The selling price it's fifteen dollars, so the profit is a dollar forty two per skateboard. Let's do mold. Material a dollar twenty per skateboard given to you. Labor ten dollars per skateboard given to you. Overhead fifteen dollars per skateboard. How did we get that? It's one hour per skateboard. It takes one hour to make a skateboard, and we're charging $15 per hour. So the total cost is $26.20. The selling price, $25. This gives a profit of, sorry, it gives a loss of $1.20. Now this is totally different from what we expected. If you use units method, you think mold skateboard makes a profit. If you use labor hours, you think it makes a loss. One of them is one technique is definitely wrong. Which technique do you think is wrong? Let's summarize our decisions. If you use the units method to charge overhead, you say, let's go with both skateboards. If you use labor hours to charge overhead, you, you may say, scrap the mold. Just scrap it because you, you make a loss. Can you see how important the technique for estimating overhead is, 
if you use the wrong technique, you make wrong decisions. That's the problem with traditional costing systems. Let me repeat. This is the problem with traditional costing systems. If you use the wrong technique for estimating overhead, you get, you make, your decisions will change, and it could actually lead to bankruptcy. So now you see the problem with traditional costing, don't you? Let's go to part B and look at ABC. Steps in implementing an ABC system, let's talk about the skateboard case. Step one. Analyze the activities. We already did that, haven't we? Look at the case study. We have analyzed activities into administration, purchasing, production. Production includes warehousing and handling, cutting, gluing, setting up molds, painting, assembly, and marketing, right? So this step is done for our case study. Step two, I want you to categorize each activity in step one as either unit level, batch level, product level, and facility level. And for each, identify the cost driver. The cost driver is a factor that drives the cost. So I want you to stop this recording. For each activity, for example, start with administration. So write down administration. What do you think it is? Is it unit, batch, product, or facility? If you said facility level, you're dead on because it's just common to everything. Then have a column, cost driver. What do you think the cost driver is? If it's administration, most of the overhead should relate to salaries, people. So the cost driver would be labor hours. OK. I did the first for you. Go through each of the others. For example, purchasing, then production, which is includes warehousing, then for cutting, gluing, setting up molds, painting, assembly, marketing. For each activity, state which you think is where you categorize it, unit, batch, product, or facility, and then identify the cost driver. Go ahead and stop this presentation while you're doing that. Are you done? Here's the answer. Solution to the part B. This is what I think. You may or may not agree with me. I did tell you there's no right answer. It really depends on the company. It depends on the way they do business. So for each company, it could be different. In the exam or in the homework assignment, justify why you said what you said, and you get full credit. Let's look at part C. Assume that you speak to the respective departments, and you determine the cost driver usage as follows. Please look at this. Uh, 
At many thousand dollars was our total cost. We said the cost driver is direct labor hours. So the accountant has to go out there and do research and talk to people. And let's say he found out that it takes 30,000 hours. People work 30,000 hours for the year, of which 25,000 hours was for skid and 5,000 hours was for mold. Purchasing. Assume the cost driver is number of orders. So the accountant has to go out there, talk to the purchasing department. Assume for the year there were 100 orders, of which 30 were for, for flat and 70 were for mold. Warehousing handling. Assume the cost driver was number of deliveries. So you go out there, talk to the warehousing people. You found out for the year there was 150 deliveries, 50 flat, and 100 for mold, and so on. So this information you just found out. Now we have to allocate the costs. Let me show you for the first one, namely administration. The cost is 90000 You were told it took 30,000 labor hours. So the application rate is $3 per labor hour. How do you allocate it? You were told flat took 25,000 hours. Mold took 5,000 hours. So 25,000 hours at $3 is 75,000. For mold, 5,000 hours at $3 is 15,000. How do you know you got it right? Well, when you add it up, it should get 90,000. So you just allocated the 90,000 between flat and mold. I want you to stop this presentation and do this analysis for the other activities. When you're done, restart. I'll give you the answer. Here are the answers. There you go. Do these answers correspond with yours? If you total it for flat, if you look at the bottom, the total cost is $290,333. For mold, it's $159,667. How do you know you got it right? If you add it up, you, end, you should get 450000 which is what we're trying to allocate in the first place. To get the unit overhead cost for flat, it's $290,333, which is the total cost, divided by how many units for flat? Do you remember? It was 50,000 units. So if you divide it, you get $5.81 per unit for flat. For mold, the total cost allocated is $159,667. How many units? Do you remember from the problem? 5,000, right? So if you divide it, it's the overhead cost is $43.13 per unit. Now, let me put the numbers up again for flat and mold. For flat, the material, a dollar, eight cents. Labor, five dollars. Overhead, five dollars, 81 cents. So the total cost is eleven dollars, 89. The selling price, 15 dollars. So you you make a profit of $3.11 for the flat. For the mold, the material $1.20 per unit, labor $10 per skateboard, overhead, what was it, $31.93 per skateboard. So you get a total of $43.13. The cost, selling price $25. So you actually make a loss of $18.13 for the 
a mold. Which method do you think is better for analyzing and giving you a more accurate picture of what's happening? Obviously, AT, ABC. And using ABC, it tells you mold is a big time loser. So don't even bother producing it. Just focus on flat. OK, the most important part here is figuring out the overhead per unit, because the other two were given to you, right? Overhead per unit, flat, $5.81. Overhead per unit, mold, $31.93. This is important, so let me repeat one more time. How did we get it? Flat skateboard. Overhead cost $290,333 from our chart. We're making 50,000 units. So the overhead cost per unit is $5.81. Mold, overhead cost 159667 We said you're making 5,000 mold. So the cost per unit is $31.93. So we went through a lot of trouble, but the answer using ABC is far more accurate than using traditional costing. The question is, is ABC worth it? Final issues. You have to ponder the benefit versus the cost of implementing an ABC system. The cost of ABC is very difficult to set up. It entails a lot of time because you basically in, you atomize your company and you've got to get every single person involved and get feedback from every single person. And you have to keep doing it to make sure that the numbers you got are accurate. What are the benefits? Obviously, more accurate product cost information. Issue. Are the returns, which is the benefits, justified taking the costs into consideration? If the answer is no, it costs too much, and the benefit, which is more accurate product cost information, isn't a big deal, what you do? You stick with the traditional. If the answer is yes, it is a big deal for us getting more accurate product cost information, and it's such a big deal, it outweighs the cost, then what you do, go with traditional. But the answer is, it really depends on the company. It's a judgment call. My opinion is, if it's a small company, maybe go with traditional. Because of the difficulties and the costs, a lot of companies still use traditional costing despite the touted benefits of ABC. That wraps up this module, and I hope you got a good feel of costing systems, traditional versus activity-based costing. Thank you.